I've got a nice problem today that involves three things that I really like. The floor function, the logarithm, and finding the closed form or a nice form for a sum. And so this comes from a magazine called the Mathematical Gazette, and it's from the year 2002. So our goal is to find a nice form of the sum, which I'll call Sn, and it's the sum as m goes from 1 to n of the floor of log base 2 of m. And before we look at a construction of this nice form, let's look at a couple of examples to see if we can get an idea of what's going on. So notice s sub 1, well that's just a single term, and that single term is equal to 0 because the log base anything of 1 is equal to 0. Next, if we look at s2, we get the floor of log base 2 of 1 plus the floor of log base 2 of 2, but both of those are easy to calculate. It's just 0 and 1 by the definition of the logarithm again. Now here we have s4, so again we've got 0 here, 1 here, but then this object is going to be between 1 and 2. And we know that because 3 is strictly less than 4, which is equal to 2 squared. So that means when we take the floor, we get 1 again. So we've got 0 plus 1 plus 1, or 2. Now the fourth sum, we have all of those three original terms. And then we have the log base 2 of 4. But if we view that number 4 as 2 squared, well, it's obvious that when we take the log base 2, we'll just get that exponent down, which is a 2. Then I've written the seventh sum just because we needed a, something a little bit bigger to see kind of what's going on. So we've got this term that's 0. We've got these two terms that are equal to 1 because they lie between 2 to the 1 and 2 to the 2, not including 2 to the 2. There are exactly two of those. Then next, there are, there are exactly four terms that are all equal to 2 because they lie between 2 to the 2 and 2 to the 3, but not including 2 to the 3. So if we were to include another term here, that other term would have a value of 3 after taking the logarithm in the floor. And then this kind of pattern extends like as you go on and on and on. Okay, so now that we've looked at this, maybe we'll get rid of these sample calculations and look at a construction of the nice form of this sum. Now that we've looked at some sample calculations, we're ready to look at the meat of this problem. So the first thing that I want to do is find a number, which I'll call capital N, such that the little n, the upper bound of our sum, lies between 2 to the capital N and 2 to the capital N plus 1, but not including that upper bound. Well, notice that we could write this kind of all at once using the logarithm and the floor function as follows. That means that capital N is the floor of the log base 2 of little n. Now we're going to use this fact, along with motivation from what we saw before, to split this sum into two pieces. And so those two pieces are going to split apart at this 2 to the n term. Okay, so let's maybe do that. We've got s sub n is equal to this sum as m goes from 1 to 2 to the n minus 1. We want to stop one short of 2 to the n because that's where everything changes. And you can see maybe why we'd want to do that by what happened with our seventh sum. Okay, so we've got this, but we're still summing over the floor of the log base 2 of m. Now we want to pick up right after this, so that's going to be the sum from m equals 2 to the n all the way up to n, and then the log base 2 of m in the floor again. Okay, so that's just splitting the sum into two pieces. But now, because our little n is strictly less than 2 to the n plus 1, we know that after taking the logarithm and the floor of everything in this range right here, we'll get the value capital N. So notice, log base 2 of 2 to the capital N is just capital N. 
but that value is going to be between capital N and capital N plus one for all of these numbers up to N, and that's because N is strictly less than two to the N plus one by our construction. Okay, so that means we're just summing up a bunch of terms that are all equal to capital N. That's a nice simplification that we can use here. And then we're gonna attack this first sum a little bit differently. So recall that a bunch of terms in a row were equal in this first sum. So it kind of makes sense to group all of those together. And that's exactly what we'll do. So we're gonna split this first sum into, well, a bunch of sums. So maybe the sum as m goes from one to one of the log base two m, plus the sum as m goes from two to three of the floor of the log base two of m, plus the sum as m goes from four to seven of the floor of the log base two of m, plus all the way up to, well, where do we wanna end? We wanna end at the spot that's right before this two to the n minus one. So this is going to be the sum as m goes from two to the n minus one to two to the n minus one, where one of those minus ones is in the exponent and the other one isn't and we're still summing this floor of the log base two of m. Okay, so that's how we've expanded this entire sum out. And that might seem like a little bit too much work, but it's actually not that bad because each of these values of the floor of the log base two are the same for all parts in this sum. So notice the value here is zero, the value here is one, the value here is two, all the way up to this spot right here where the value is going to be n minus one. Okay, and now we just have to calculate how many of each of these we have. So notice that we have one term in this sum, we have two terms in this sum, we have four, which is equal to two to the two terms in this sum, all the way up to this one right here, which you can count up, but what we'll have is two to the n minus one terms in this sum. So that means we can take this second sum and rewrite it in the following way. So this is gonna be the sum as k goes from zero all the way up to n minus one of k times two to the k. So let's make sure that makes sense. Well, we've got zero times one, that would be like this, zero times two to the zero, and then we'll have one times two to the one, that would be this one times two to the one. We'll have two times two to the two, that would be like that term over there, and then our very last term will be n minus one times two to the n minus one. Okay, great. So again, we've rewritten this first sum as this, and then I'm just gonna bring that down. So that means we're gonna have capital N times the number of terms that we have, but the number of terms will be N minus two to the N plus one. Just our last term minus our first term and then plus one. Okay, so now it turns out that we need to find a closed form for this bit, but that's not so hard with some calculus tricks, which we'll do on the next. So far, we've chosen a capital N, so that our upper bound little n lives between two to the capital N and two to the capital N plus one. In terms of the logarithm and the floor function, that's how those two are related over there in yellow. Next, we rewrote our S sub n, which was our goal sum, as the following sum, which will be a little bit easier to calculate, and then this extra term. Now we can get to calculating this first sum, and we can do that using calculus. Notice this looks like the derivative of something, seeing as we have something in the exponent that looks like a multiplier out front. But they're not offset in the way that they should be. So perhaps it'll be useful to factor a two out of this. So I can do that by putting a minus one here and bringing a two out. Okay, but now we can see that this first bit can be rewritten as two times the sum as k goes from zero to n minus one of k times x to the k minus one, where we evaluate that at x equals two. Then I can bring the rest of this stuff down. 
okay, but now that looks like the derivative of something. That looks like the derivative of just x to the k. So that's what we'll use here. This is two times the derivative of the sum as k goes from zero to n minus one of x to the k, where we evaluate that at x equals two, bring the rest of this stuff down. Okay, but now that's a finite geometric series. So there's a standard well-known formula for a finite geometric series, which we will use. So now we have two times the derivative of x to the n minus one over x minus one. And then we evaluate that at x equals two plus our leftover stuff, which is n times n minus two to the n plus one. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's bring this part of the calculation up and we'll finish it off. So we're almost done. We've broken our goal sum down into the derivative of this rational function evaluated at two plus this extra term. So let's get to finishing it off. So we can use maybe the quotient rule here. So take the derivative of the numerator, that'll be n times x to the n minus one times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is just one times the numerator, which is x to the n minus one, all over the denominator squared. Then we need to evaluate that at x equals two, and then we still have this extra stuff added on. So now let's see what simplification can happen here. We have two times, well, we're gonna have n times x to the n, those will build up minus x to the n, so that's gonna be n minus one times x to the n. And then next we'll have this n times x to the n minus one times negative one, so there we'll have a minus n times x to the n minus one. Finally, a plus one from this guy right here. Then in the denominator, we have x minus one squared still. Evaluate that at x equals two, and then bring down the rest. Great. And so now all we need to do is plug in x equals two. So notice if we plug x equals two in here, we just get a one. So that's fairly easy to see. Here we'll have n minus one times two to the n. Here we'll have n times two to the n minus one. And then we can always distribute that two through as well. So I'll leave it to you to do the final calculation, but what we can end up with is capital N minus one times two to the N plus one plus two plus this extra stuff, which I'll just bring down. Okay, and so that's our final, maybe nice closed form for our goal sum, where of course this capital N is the floor of the log base two of little n. And that's a good place to stop. And we're still, 